good morning saturday morning and uh just heading off to the shop I'm gonna grab a heat gun they put a bunch of masking tape down on the floor not masking tape some sort of tape anyways when they were working in the basement and it all stuck so i gotta get the heat gun to heat it up a little bit get it off a little easier uh yesterday was fun so it's really icy around here the wind's blowing keeping everything polished we got a little bit of rain overnight uh it was so icy yesterday i guess buses were all canceled and stuff for school so we did have some pork to pick up from the butcher and we had to buy some stuff for uh Actually, my daughter's uh, birthday parties today, so um, we thought, you know what, it's really icy, we're going to be responsible, we'll wait, let the sander trucks get out, let it warm up a bit. So we waited till around noon, drove into town, and uh, while we were parked at the uh, Save On Foods grocery store, somebody still managed to smash into us, so now we have uh, damage to Corey's car, need a light, need some fixing, um, did run over to collision place in grand prairie and they're like yeah actually you know what that's not the end of the world should be able to fix that without replacing this panel should be able to uh, obviously get a new light and buff this out and paint it so just kind of one of those things i mean i i, I was thinking about it I, you know i'll probably give whoever it was that they, they didn't stick around they didn't leave any information or anything so uh, obviously they are that kind of people where they, you know, don't own up to their mistakes or possible they didn't even know that it happened, I guess. So we'll, uh, there was no, there was, like I say, there was no note or anything left. So I guess uh, at this point it's a, a hit and run, but uh, <clears throat> we went over uh, to the collision center anyways to report it. And I was actually quite shocked because the, the uh, I guess the lady, when she came out, she's like, yeah, it's probably $4,000 damage. Just that little bit. Then we looked up the light. Just the light alone at Ford is like, you know, just about $700. So plus whatever it will take to get the paint and the dent out. Um, yeah, just money has no value anymore. It doesn't matter how much you make or whatever. It's just like... The minute you try to do something or need to repair or fix something, it's all gone. I don't know what these dogs found and ripped up. There's garbage all around. But it is super icy, so I guess be careful if you're up and about in the uh, in the peace country because it's hard walking. So Dad's been working away at this uh, hopper that we got from the auction sale. He's got the electric motor mounted. Uh, got a switch over here. We're big into uh, repurposing and salvaging, so this whole switch contraption was actually off of an old lathe that was sitting around here. So we can do a lot of this stuff without going to town. Um, you see, there's about 48 inches of exposed auger there, and uh, it was quite funny. So I guess it wasn't funny, but uh, have a laugh about it now. <clears throat> I brought a bag over. This whole hopper holds basically 2,000 pounds of grain. And uh, as soon as he got it fired up and got it running, he said, you know, bring a little bit of feed over and put it in there. You know, he said, just bring a little bit, just a little bit, dump a little bit in there. We'll make sure it all works. And I was like, no, let's just put in 2,000 pounds, dad, like all or nothing. So uh, reluctantly, he's like, okay, well, go get 2,000 pounds then, I guess. So I put 2,000 pounds in here and we kick, clicked on the switch and all we got was stalled out electric motor. So then I had to climb in and pail all the grain out and uh now we're building some uh these dogs are attacking these cats um now we're uh building some a baffle to put in there uh not exactly sure what style it's gonna be there was a piece of stainless over there um or whatever that is and uh i think that might because it's a half circle it might be the best and we'll be able to mount it up out of there that happens quite a bit when the when the grain gets, uh, the auger gets into too much grain, it just can't, it can't handle it with a little one horse motor. So that's uh, probably gonna be a project for today. We'll get that finished up and we'll see if we can, uh, see if we can use it. Anyways, I better find my heat gun and uh, go get that stuff peeled off the floor. My fear is if I don't get that done, there'll be a, a hundred little girls running around and they'll all pick at it and then it'll be a million little pieces instead of one long strip that I can just slowly warm up and uh, warm up and keep going. Right 
there. Did you even haul in my coffee, buddy? Well, Eddie, you hauled the tractor boat. Dad, the tractor's plowing behind you. He's plowing? Yeah. Behind what do you mean he's plowing? That little tractor can't pull this big four-wheel drive tractor and a plow. You're crazy. Buddy, is that the best way to... Uh tie up your tow rope when you're driving down the road yeah. well, you know what i think would happen if dad tried to wrap his tow rope around the tractor cab and the loader and leave it hitched up to the back you know what i think would happen what? i think i'd get a little bit down the road and a piece would fall off and go under the tire and it would get tight and i'd rip the cab right off and i'd be laying on the road i think you should re uh, rethink this how fast are you going to go down the road like this? Oh, slow. Oh, slow. Okay. And you got your grain bin loaded back up? That's how you haul it? Uh-huh. We hauled it over here on the flat deck. You just put it in the back of the trailer to haul it home. Once it's empty? Yep. That's efficient farming. <clears throat> you get everything fueled up? We got a long, a long road. Up two times today. Two times? Oh boy. Yeah. Oh, well, good afternoon. I, uh, what, I think it's around one o'clock. I was in the house there doing some uh, some basement farming. Gotta gotta do that every once in a while. It's uh, it's only about minus 10, but it's the wind is just howling. It's uh, It's been really nice actually to sit in the house, look at the window, you can watch the animals, uh, watch the wind swirl. Uh, very, very blessed that we were able to basically build our house right around very established trees or right in amongst them. So we cleared back, well, you know, a really good guard so the trees can't fall on the house. Or if, you know, they, heaven forbid, they ever catch fire or something, won't burn the house down. But uh, so often you see new established acreages and new built homes and they're kind of built out, you know, just in a big area. And then they got to start planting trees. I think the plant, uh, you know, uh, hundred year old um, tree would probably cost a fortune so we're uh, very blessed to already have them there but it is Sunday and Sunday is bin checking day so I'm up here I'm gonna check all the bins I'm gonna go down and feed the critters there's one guy coming to pick up his feed and then uh, that's gonna be it I've uh, kind of made the decision that it, if it if at all possible on Sunday I got to uh, I got to take some time and because uh take some time away from the bag making and stuff because that's getting a little bit out of hand which is a good problem to have but uh seven days a week you know, 24 hours a day is a little bit much so let me get all my bins checked here and then we'll go down and uh, feed the critters Whew. well it's relieving to see that the uh a couple of the waters are still working this one is working the one up in that pig pen in the ground is working this one we never on this year that one, I think the heating element shorted out, so it's not working either. But that one's also working, so. I don't know what these waters are good for, like for how many heads. There's usually a rating, but uh, what do we got? We got like four, five, five steers, two llamas, and like six pigs. So we're not uh, with uh, the three waters. Of course, we have more than enough. <clears throat> it's also nice to have this one now so close to the chicken coop, because uh, I don't have to pack water very far. I just bring my little scoop, fill up an ice cream bucket, try to keep that chicken water as clean as possible. <clears throat> so the last like couple weeks here, I'm not exactly sure what got the chickens, if it was the molt or the cold or whatever. But uh, once we finally got settled into the house, we were able to uh, you know, pay a little more attention. So, I mean, of course, everything gets fed every day and looked after, but as far as you know, keeping everything like extremely clean and, and doing all the extras, some of that gets pushed off to the side. Um, and uh, depending on how much gets pushed off to the side is how good your winter prep was. Uh, the gentleman farmer, uh, my buddy Stan and I, we did a, 
live about winter prep on uh, on Friday night. So if uh, that's kind of stuff you're interested in, uh, check out Smoke and Oak, that uh, YouTube channel that we have there. It's a pretty good time. Um, I did go ahead and start adding, of course, like we got that big shipment of oyster shells. So there's free choice oyster shells in here. There's feed. That's what all these tubes are about. There's, uh, I don't know what's in here. That was feed, oyster shell. That was feed. That's, I think there was like buckwheat or something. That's a little bit of grit she was buying when she couldn't get oyster shells at calcium carbonate. Um, we're putting some sunflowers down, you know, a scoop or two every, uh, every day. That's got, uh, you know, a bit of protein, a bit of fat, a bit of all that other stuff. So the, uh, the chickens have a very wide range of stuff. And since we started doing that, cleaning out their water every other day, we started to get more eggs. So there's what, there's three in there and there's uh, two in there. So this is our chicken herd. Not exactly how many are there, but uh, yeah, we got five eggs today. So kind of excited about that. Um, I think there is quite a bit of value in giving an assortment of grain to animals, all animals in fact. Uh, lots of people, you know, they go, oh, I just need oats for my horse, or I just need straight barley for my cows, or straight wheat for my chicken. And of course, that's all well and good. But if you give them a wide variety of, like our chicken feed is wheat, barley, peas, oats, canola, and wheat, barley, peas, oats, canola. Yeah, so those five grains, uh, of course, in different different percentages, so it's not, uh, they're not equal percentages. And then we give them the oyster shell, the sunflower seeds, of course, all the table scraps, all that kind of stuff. I do have this supplemental light on a timer. It's just, it's just a light like that one, but it's over here. It turns on at four o'clock, turns off at 10. We do plug this water heater in to keep the water thawed out. And uh, I'm not exactly sure if we're making money on eggs or not, but uh, it sure is fun, right? It's fun to come up and get the eggs every day. Now on to these guys. Chippy's going to be our longtime resident. He's a little baby calf that uh, Buddy's grandpa brought over for him. So uh, my in-laws, they have a commercial herd of cattle. Now, of course, that guy didn't really fit, didn't really fit into what they were going to be doing. So he's here now, so Buddy can feed him every day and keep him looked after. Oh, there's my coat. That's handy. My coat's still here from... Uh, when I was fixing the power, I guess I'll have to go get thawed out. Better not forget that. All covered in shit. That's nice that they would, you know, they, they would do that for a guy. Like you forget it and you hang it on here and, and right away the critters that you feed every day, they not only pull it down and trample it in the snow, but they shit all over it. So thank you. Thank you for that. Oh, it's wiped out. Maybe I shouldn't even feed him today. But that's not uh, not an option, right? If you're gonna have livestock, you better be uh, you better be committed to rain, shine, cold, ice, snow, blowing, whatever. You better be getting out there and uh, making sure everybody's everybody's happy. Well, good evening. I am uh, back in, and, and we're actually getting a real fire going. So this morning we went through the motions, read the directions, did our first break in fire, followed the directions to a T warmed it up, let it cool back down. And uh, I mean, it's starting to snow again outside. Wind's blowing like crazy. So it's nice to uh, sit inside around the fire. Quite a bit to this stove. I've never uh, never been really involved in a wood stove before, but it's got this uh, fancy gauge on the side here, which shows you when you're burning at optimal temperature. It's got a few, uh, few features. There's this handle here. There's this handle here for air intake. And then there's an optional blower on the back of it as well. And uh, I couldn't find the book for this, but I assume it's thermostatically operated as well. So once it heats up, then it'll turn on. And I expect this is just a variable speed switch for how hard you want it to blow. So hopefully once the uh, stove warms up here, that blower kicks in and uh, we can uh, save a little bit on the power bill. But as far as the day, you know, the day's, day's almost over, it is Sunday, so 
We're going to uh, gonna go up and have some supper and uh, call her night. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you all on the next one.